more money in your pocket. Who doesn't like the sound of that? It's the theory behind a unique research project on hay feeder design that's currently in the works. We selected what we deemed as the four most popular used hay feeders in the state. And what we're going to look at is uh, how those feeders differ in uh, how efficient they are at hay utilization and how much hay is actually wasted by using those feeders. Austin Sexton is a graduate student in animal science at OSU. Although previous researchers have conducted studies on hay feeding, this project is unique in that it examines the efficiency of feeders and exactly how much hay is wasted. And it's designed especially for Oklahoma, where as much as 85% of all hay is put up in the form of round bales. We kind of put our own twist on it by polling producers and retailers in the state of Oklahoma to see what is really being utilized here in this state and kind of put it on their terms really. Here's how it's all set up. One collection period entails uh, a total of two bales fed and so we'll put in a bale and uh, collect the waste from the feeding of that bale and then once we clean that bale up we'll put in a second bale and uh, collect it the same way and that gives us a total of eight replicates for each of the bale feeders. There are four pastures and uh, we have 14 cows in each pasture and uh, those cows are evenly allotted so that the weight and body condition score of those cows is even across all four pastures. And each pasture has a 20 foot by 40 foot concrete pad in it and uh, each pasture also has a different feeder in it. We give the cows one bale's worth of feeding to adapt to the different hay feeders and so we put a bale in, we let them have however long it takes for them to consume that bale, and then we come in and clean up all the hay and all the manure and everything, and those, those pads are pretty clean. The student crew separates and gathers the hay waste once every 24 hours. We'll total all these weights up to get a total waste weight. Then it's all weighed and documented. From there, Austin puts a subsample into a paper bag. It's later ground up and tested for its nutrient value. And we can see if uh, the cows actually differ in their sorting based on feeder and the access that they can get on that, by that feeder. And eventually determine if you're getting the most for your money. Results from the hay feeder efficiency project should be ready by mid-spring. For more on the cattle feeding study, we're joined by Dave Lallman, who is an extension beef cattle specialist. And Dave, let's talk a little bit about sort of the uniqueness of this project. It is unique because there haven't been but about three experiments published in the peer-reviewed literature on hay feeding, which is really kind of amazing if you think about, you know, hay being, I don't recall exactly the fourth or fifth ranked crop uh, here in Oklahoma and the fact that people feed hay all winter long all over the country. And there's really a lot financially and, and work-wise that goes into hay. Let's talk a little bit about that and then when you compare that to the waste it kind of doesn't really all add up, does it? it? It that That is amazing too because you know the first thing we do is spend a lot of planning time and, and uh, financial resources growing the crop and then cutting it, baling it, uh, maybe moving it to a storage area, storing it, hauling it back out to feed, but then when it comes time to actually feed it and trying to be efficient with our feeding systems, uh, there just hasn't been very much attention paid to that. And there really is quite a bit of waste, it sounds like. There is. In one of those early studies that I mentioned, they showed that without any kind of a hay feeder around a round bale like these behind us, uh, you, they demonstrated up to about 45% of that bale being completely wasted. And that's a pretty good chunk of, of money going out on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah, in today's market, you know, on a good quality grass uh, hay bale, that's probably 40 to $50 of waste. Turning back now to the study that you're doing here, what are some of your early findings? Well, you know, it's amazing. As Austin mentioned, what we're doing is looking at different hay feeder types and just trying to get some head-to-head -head comparisons there. 
and there's a lot of difference uh, from hay feeder hay feeder to hay feeder and so we you know he mentioned that we've got two primary designs and that is kind of open bottom with no sheeting and sheeting and so what we're finding so far is that you know the sheeting really helps now it adds to the weight um, which is on the negative side, but in terms of hay waste, it appears to be very substantial savings. Okay, and this study is ongoing. Is it going to wrap up in the next couple of months? It will. Uh, we're just going to conduct this throughout this hay feeding season and uh, hope to hope to wrap it up here probably about middle of March. Okay, and we'll check back in with you when, it, when the results are final to see what you guys found out. We'd be glad to have you. Okay, Dave, thank you.